Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is G. Fate is part of this full moon. Full moon. April full moon. The April full moon. We're going to take a look at the chart. We want to see what what exactly is going on. I think this is a very powerful time. So far, the month of April has proven to be a change of values and shared values. And usually if we change a value, it's after we have come to the realization that we have something that is no longer a value or it's outdated in some way, or it's just old and it's time to just let the shit go. All righty, there it is. It is a full moon in Scorpio. Yes, there it is. You can't miss it, right? The moon is in Scorpio at 4 degrees and 17 minutes. Full moons are a time of closure, an ending of a cycle, a completion. Normally when we have a full moon, we are releasing something. That's just the basic meaning for the full moon energy. It's the moon, so it's typically about emotions and feelings. Sometimes it can have to do with the past because it's the moon. It can also have to do with the public. We think of people who are who work with the public, whether it's with you know people who are firefighters or paramedics or the police officers, anybody who works with the public, especially involving intense things, powerfully deep, intense things, tragic stuff, sometimes so deep that it's bringing up stuff from the past, things that we've been through, the current events that we go through, We're like, oh my God, I thought I processed that and it brought up shit I had been through in the past that I thought was done and over with and left behind and released. And lo and behold, a new event occurred and I'm like, oh my God, there's still something there yet that has to be released. Something that has to be let go of. Something that's that I've just carried around too long. It's literally like the ball and chain. Yeah, it can be like the ball and chain. So many times people consider that that Scorpio tail, right? Like the tail of the scorpion, right? As though it's the stinger and it'll get you and sting you type of thing because the Scorpio energy can get really fixated and hold on very tightly to some things, okay? Or people, things and people. It's, you know, Scorpio energy in general, when you when you think about it and you think of a lot of the intensity behind it, And you think of how it's very fixed. And we come to understand that Scorpio is more about our attachments. So it's our attachments, well, whatever it is that you feel very powerful and intense about, right? Now, because it's Scorpio, we think family members, you know, because it's blood bonds, that's Scorpio energy. But it can be relationships as in like physical relationships, you know, people that we are physically intimate with. It can also be people we are emotionally intimate with. We get emotionally attached to them. And many times we, we, we just might not even be aware of it. And we can even be so emotionally attached that we feel like it's our duty, it's our job even to share right? To have that back and forth, that shared value of what we're going through currently or what we've been through in the past, you know, like our shared tragedies, because that's Scorpio. It, it's all about, this is why we bond. We understand the pain. We understand the tragic stuff, the suffering. We understand the abuses we've been through. We understand the trauma. And that is Scorpio energy, unfortunately, traumas. But what's wonderful is the ability to recognize and to release those attachments. The question is, what do you have attachments to? Who and what? What are you attached to? Buddha once said, the only true way to be free is to release all desire and all attachments and to have no expectations. Therefore, no one can disappoint you. No one can disappoint you. And when something is taken from you or when somebody walks away from you or you feel like there's been a closed door, you say, well, I never, you know, I had no expectations. I wasn't attached. 
And so if it's gone, it's gone. And, and I'll just, I'll be okay. Sure. It might not make me happy, but I can go on. I can live. I can survive. I'm not attached. So one of the secrets, because to do that, right, with the Buddha's teaching could make someone um, kind of scary in a way if we all walk around 100% detached, right? So we really truly, I think, are looking for a balance between our Taurus and our Scorpio energy. Taurus can be very fixed and it's all about desire, right? So when you have a full moon in Scorpio, the sign of attachments, the sign of fixed energy, the sign of the wounds, of the tragic stuff, we have to ask, what have I been holding on to? There could be stuff you weren't aware of. And many times when we go through the current stuff, it helps us, whether it, I know it doesn't feel good, but many times it's the, it's the new experiences that may bring up pains. They're not bringing up pains just to like put salt in an old wound and be like a ha ha type of thing. No, it's to show what is still there. It is to show what's hidden. Remember, the ruler of this full moon is Pluto, Pluto and Scorpio. They rule. I said Pluto and Scorpio. Pluto and Mars, they rule this full moon. So the Pluto energy is what has been buried. It was a vulnerability and you bury it deeply because it's too difficult to face. It's painful. It's emotionally, tragically painful. Well, if you bury it, then you don't got to see it. You don't see it. You don't got to deal with it. And you, you know, you go through life. You, you have your distractions, you know, you, you, whatever. You keep yourself busy, right? I'll deal with that tomorrow. Just get through today. I'll deal with that tomorrow, right? That whole thing. So here it is. It's April 23rd, 2024. The full moon is at 6.47 p.m. Central Daylight Time because that's the time zone that I am in. If there's a full moon at 4.17 in Scorpio, that means that the sun is at 4.17 in Taurus energy. All right? Because that's what makes a full moon when the sun and the moon, the sun, an authority figure. This is masculine energy. Could be a boss figure, a parental figure, someone who's in charge. Right? It's in Taurus. So it's in values. That's Venus energy, Taurus. It's Venus, my values. It's the earth. It is fixed energy. It is desire. It's magnetic. So it's that opposite energy. It's the push pull. It's the, it's some would say possibly a power struggle because you have the authority figure, the sun down at one end of my desires. And we think earth and we think the planet, but we think creature comforts and we think, what do I need to feel comforted? Think about your home. Think about in your home, literally, you get up, you go to work, you come home. What is the first thing you want to do, right? Some people like to just jump right in the shower. They got their special soap. Some people like to turn on music, right? Some people might like set the lighting or light some candles. Some people want to have a fire going in the fireplace. Some people want to have a glass of wine. Some people want to have a nice meal, right? Some people want all of the above, all of the above to kind of create a safe space where they feel peace and stabilized and comforted. And usually the five senses, Taurus, the five senses plays a role in that. So at the opposite end, we have to ask, what the heck are we releasing? What are we attached to? What is it that's outdated? We think moon, some sort of emotions. It could have to do with the public and our family. It could be the mother wound because it's the moon. So it's women or feminine energy. How about that? Physical attachments. We think of sexual. We think of people who have been bonded, bonded through blood, bonded through emotions. As I back up on this chart, if you take a good look at it, you see we have the beautiful, beautiful Solomon star, I call it. Trine, the trine, the trine. And it's a star that's going two ways, as above, so below, right? And, and the upside down one, as above, so below. It goes both ways. That's what I hear in my head. This is the Solomon star. And with this star, there's support, lots of support. We've got earth energy showing up big time at 14 degrees. 
So whatever this release is for this full moon, the main thing in the chart is to see if you have something in Scorpio. Do you have something in Scorpio? Two degrees, right? So it's at four degrees. And look, we have something at two. We even have something at one. We have Humea at one degrees in Scorpio. She's been working this spot for a while now, right? Humea is there to restore something, something that's been destroyed, something that's gone through a deep transformation at Scorpio. There may have been destruction. It's to rise up and it's to say it's, we're trying to transform and change something. And usually that process, it can be painful. It can be ugly. It can be something we wish we didn't have to deal with because that's just, that's Scorpio energy. It's not frivolous whatsoever. It's going to talk about stuff that's, that's deeply meaningful. It's deeply important. It's not about the weather. It's, it, you know, it, it's about shared resources, shared natural resources. This can be insurance money. We think of inheritances. We think of, Hey, there was, you know, some sort of a disaster and I, I got to make an insurance claim. I'm not ma I'm not saying this is happening on this day. So don't get me wrong when I say those words about insurance claims and natural disasters. I'm giving examples strictly for the Scorpio keywords and it's a release, right? So will there be a big insurance payout for some folks? You got to see if you have something in your chart. Do you have something at two, three, four, five, and six degrees of Scorpio energy? There's a possibility signals the end of a cycle. Okay. And it's not just this one thing that matters. You got to look up other things in your chart, but understanding Mars, your body, understanding Pluto, which is intense, deep power. The past is involved and maybe some wounds there, maybe some vulnerabilities. Okay. Those are all going to be part of this, but Scorpio tends to be like that partnership energy. Because we're bonded. It takes two in Scorpio. It's not just me by myself. It's not, it's not Taurus. Taurus is, this is my money. This is my money. This is my body. This is my bank account. That's Taurus energy. Scorpio energy is the we energy. We've grown up. It's, it's number eight. And we go all the way over, right? We've gone through the Libra energy. We might have gotten married. We own things together. We have shared assets, Scorpio energy. Okay. We have shared assets, shared values. And what kind of values do we as a people share? What do we have in common, right? Because it's the moon, the public, right? And our bigger family is what? What am I always saying? The bigger family is humanity, right? And so as humanity, on this rock, what do we share? The rock, right? We literally share the planet. And so the natural resources of the planet, we think of things that we got to dig deep for, right? People, right? Companies mining for the resources, the beautiful treasures of the planet, whether it's gold or oil, or, you know, there's a whole slew of other things, different minerals, different stones, right? Things for, yeah, the cars, the electric cars and the batteries. Like there's a whole lot of, whole lot of things that are needed from the earth itself to provide for the technology and to provide for, well, for our luxuries, basically. Water, feelings, emotions, it's history and it's the past because it's water. We've got something at zero and five in cancer, housing market, homes, the public, family, nurturing, feeding children, possibly mom, the mother wound. What do mothers do? They breastfeed, right? We have Scorpio, the shared bonds. That's where the release is with the moon. And then we have Pisces. We also have a letting go and a release, possibly forgiveness with Scorpio, possibly forgiveness and surrender, I pray, or let's have some peace, right? And let's have some understanding and unity with Pisces. Two degrees, between two and five degrees, we have support. Actually, between zero and five degrees, we have strong support. And that's one trine of the Solomon star. The other trine in the Solomon star is in earth. It's in earth. And if you're looking closely at this chart, you may see some objects you don't recognize. 
That's because this chart, other than the sun and the moon, this chart is all asteroids. And so take a, take a bold look at the background. A lot, you know, four objects over there in Aquarius. Remember Aquarius is social services, social causes, group energy. It's the humanitarian, it's supply chain, it's the airlines, it's, you know, inventions, it's power, it's the electric grid, it's batteries, it's battery storage. Like I could go on forever. So put some keywords in because I'm going to go nuts. Uh, then we've got Pisces, right? Forgiveness, understanding and unity, prayer. We've got objects in Pisces. We've got Aries energy. We got a lot there. Aries, you know, Mars and fighting and war and assertive and positive and young and actions of my body. And then we go to Taurus. Holy shit. Look at freaking Taurus. Oh my God. When I pulled this up, I had to do a double take. I lied. I had to do like a quadruple take. I thought, what the shit is this? We got, we've got pan at two, the sun at four and some stuff. Yeah. That we're going to learn about together on this channel. There's a whole slew of stuff all the way to 27 degrees of freaking Taurus. 27. 25, 22, we, we know who that is, Pandora, 19, 19, Her, Hercules at 17, we got something at 15, at 14, at 11, holy crap, there's a lot there. What is Taurus? You know what Taurus is? I just talked about it. We think Venus, we think my values, we think the earth, we think peace, we think creature comforts, we think the jewels and the values of the planet. So what's on top of the planet without digging, right? Because we know Pluto and Mars are Scorpio. So they're below. Venus is on top. Not like top isn't better, but we can see it. So it's the fruit. It's the animals. It's the vegetation. It's the dirt. Like that's the stuff on top. Underneath is the oil and the gold. You know, the shit we got to mine for. You follow? So Venus energy is Taurus. And we think of the creature comforts, the smells. We think of textiles and clothing and beauty and art, food, food, food. <laughs> yes. And more food. It's Taurus. What do we want for dinner? Right? How often do you ask that question? Every single day of the week. What are we having for dinner? Right? And then we back up a little bit. We got some stuff in Gemini. And then, yeah, the water support. This is not even showing you the regular chart. The Solomon star. All right. The Solomon star. Now, I want to point your attention to Vertex. I, I drew her in. And I'm going to show her real quick on the other chart so that we don't have another hour-long video. Vertex is here at 20 degrees. Vertex represents fate. Vertex. So Vertex is down here. At 22, now remember that number 22, okay? Hold on to it in your head. That matters because you see 22 a lot in this chart. 22. Fate. When, with a person or an event that occurs in your life. Do you have anything in Taurus? Do you have anything in Capricorn? Do you have anything in Virgo at 22? Earth energy is very stabilizing, okay? Capricorn is for the long term. It wants to create stability by material, tangible objects. It builds something. It's all about building. And it is creating security. Something with faith that's creating security. We go to the opposite. The anti-vertex is in cancer, homes, nurturing, family, emotional security. It's water energy. It's water energy. Think mom. Think when you were young. What would have made your home feel more like a home? What did other kids or other families' homes have that you thought, oh my God, I wish my home had been like that, right? To give you emotional security, to make you feel emotionally safe and secure. Remember, cancer energy, emotional security, emotional safety, and Capricorn is the opposite. So it's material security, material safety. Yes, material and tangible. 
the 3D, something you can pick up and hold in your hand, Capricorn. Fate is part of this full moon. There's a release that 22 degrees is going to be key because in the chart here, we have 22 degrees Pandora's box. And that's like that can of worms, right? We've been talking about it where I'm like, oh God, holy crap. Do we, do we have to have this discussion? She is, she's part of it, you know, but it says that once you open the box, once you open the can, that it releases all the evils of the world and all that's left is hope. Because it's in Taurus, because it's in Taurus, Venus, what would be left is the hope for peace because Venus represents peace. We need stability, Taurus, Venus. All that we have left is to say, okay, I've made a change in my values. I've released possibly the wounds, possibly my outdated, our, our outdated values our outdated shared resources, our outdated attachments. It's a possibility because it's time to grow up. It's time to move on. It's time to recognize that nobody, it's not good for any country when people have to witness other people constantly being killed and murdered and senselessly tortured or, yeah, basically tortured through the, through not being able to have water or food. It's, it's, it's watching this long turn drawn out suffering, but it's intentional and it's sick. So a shared, a value is changing and the, all that should be left would be the hope that we can get some peace and create peace in some way. And so the 22 degrees, even though it's, even though it's, it's Pandora, which is like, oh God, you know, I'm like, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? It's 22 degrees. It's at 22 and it is a sextile. It is a sextile. When we look closely at this, let me see if you guys can see what I'm seeing. When you look closely at this sextile, I'll draw so that they connect the uh, 22 and the 22. That's 60 degrees away. Okay. So the 60 degrees away creates support, support for food, support for all the tourist keywords that I gave. And it can be money. It can be cash. You know, it could be that too, because it's money in the bank and banking and it's to homes and family and maybe it's housing, right? And creating housing for wherever you are, right? Wherever you are. And Taurus being at four degrees and the sun being there, um, you know, this, this, this energy right here at 22 trines, trines Pandora's box, right? The fated stuff. Hello, Taffy. It trines Pandora's box. Yeah. And I didn't even draw that trine in, but it's a trine there. So we take that trine, the 22 degrees, and we draw it right there just went right through Venus. Let me put her up here. Yeah, you see that? It's a freaking trine right there. Okay. So do you have something in your chart at 22 degrees in Virgo down here? You might. Do you have something around there? If you do, this could be, it can be interesting. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what to say as far as, okay, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing because it will depend on other things in your chart. Okay. It will depend on what is this making it easy to happen? Because that's what a trine does. It makes something to happen easily, right? Yeah, makes something easily happen. <laughs>